Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of Inside Out on the Road, a show where we focus on individual stocks with in-depth analysis. We deep dive into financials and we also tell you about the key risk and triggers going forward. Well, let's get straight to our first talk today. My colleague Sonal gets us a very special deep dive on Idea Forge Technologies. There's been a big surge in drone usage in the country. In fact, investments in the drone industry touched $50 million in FY23. So I thought, let's put spotlight on the only listed drone manufacturing company in India, Idea Force Technologies. Listed in July 2023 at a whopping premium of 96%, but since then the stock has fallen 30% from its peak. The company is a manufacturer of unmanned aerial vehicles or drones with a market share of 50% in 2022. It has three products if we divide it into segments. First is hardware, which is basically the UAVs, payloads, batteries, communication systems, etc. Second would be software, which is a service they provide for maintaining or controlling and managing the UAVs and communication systems. Third is solutions, which is done to enhance the value of UAVs to the end customer. In terms of their revenues, majority of them come from defense at 96% of revenues and the rest is the civil business. They had 265 customers as on 31st March 2023, which included the government, the defense forces, disaster management forces, forest department, their sea info systems as well, to name a few. Coming to financials, the company has grown substantially. In fact, revenues have grown impressively from 35 crores to 186 crores in FY23, from margins which were make, actually making a loss at the EBITDA level, now margins stand at 46%, and in FY22 itself, they had made margins of 51%. And they've turned around from a loss-making company to a profit-making company with pad of 32 crores in FY23. But what led to this massive improvement? We'll ask the management. Company has 24 patents across jurisdictions and they are waiting approval for 37. And this is a very important aspect of the business as well. The only worry or the worry that the investors have is the valuations. Because the stock is trading at 105 times FY23 PE. So what is the USP of the business? Are they going to grow at current levels? And what is the business all about? Let's ask the management in our deep dive segment. We have with us the management of Idea Forge. There's Rahul Singh and Vipul Joshi from the management team joining us now. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on Inside Out. And this is a show where we would like to understand everything about your company. There's been so much excitement, right? 96% listing gains um, and uh, definitely a lot of interest as well. So let me start with a basic question first. Since there's been so much chatter around the drone industry as well, how big is it and what's the growth rates looking like in this particular segment and which are the clients that you cater to? If I talk about the overall size, roughly about $2.3 billion worth of size of including defense, civil and all other markets that are there in the Indian market as of now is where the industry is poised to grow. And that's the overall time that we are looking at how drone industry is speculated to grow in its own segments and today our client segment is segregated between defense and civil when i talk about defense our pure usage is all surveillance and in civil we are uh, looking at uh, surveillance as well as uh, mapping as a use case uh, which talks about survey of india as a user uh, which is also our private resellers who are catering to the large scale mapping and in surveillance it is uh, police forces paramilitary forces and in defense obviously your army air force navy all our customers who we are catering to as of now okay interesting so 96 percent from defense and four percent from civil is what you're getting right now but let me come to you because r d patents that's a big part of your business as well how much is that as a cost is it something that increases this technology change after a couple of years for a particular drone and uh, what is it as a percentage? What does uh, uh, IP uh, innovation and technology development uh, amount in terms of the cost to us? I'll not comment on the exact cost, but it remains a central part of uh, our uh, engineering effort here. Uh, we, I think, focus uh, deeply on creating differentiated IP. That's been the history since we started. So uh, we are one of the most indigenously and in-house designed, developed, manufactured products in the country. 
uh, and uh, in-house technology development, IP creation will remain a core part of value creation as we go ahead. Okay. So you didn't give me the exact number, but if you can tell us, is it uh, high single digits, is it uh, low double digits? If you look at the PNL or the balance sheet, where does it stand? So uh, also to add on what Rahul said, we see being a drone manufacturer who started 16 years back, we have significantly invested behind technology all this while. We have 63 patents filed under IDEA Forge. Out of that, 25 have been granted globally. And all of these 63 patents have also been filed globally and not just in Indian market. I would say that from a revenue percentage perspective, there are double digit numbers uh, which are right now part of our focus. But this is something which was historical. And at that time, our stage and where the drone industry in the Indian market of how we could invest behind this technology was also limited. But with the scope of now today, and if you know that from our fundraise in the IPO as well, 50 crores uh, is what we are looking at. Uh, you know, 40 crores is what we are uh, putting behind product development as well. So in that case, just uh, some idea, of what would a drone cost like? What is the range in terms of pricing? And does the technology change often? So uh, I think unlike a lot of industries where the industry has reached a certain uh, growth maturity, uh, uh, drones still remain a high growth, high speed of evolution sector. And what broadly, what we believe is what drones have done today is just scratched the tip of the iceberg in terms of what's potential ahead. So uh, in, uh, commenting on if the technology changes often, it doesn't change, but it continuously keeps on evolving. And I think year on year, we are pushing our technology on three metrics, performance, reliability, and autonomy. When it comes to manufacturing a drone, how much of the supply chain is dependent on imports when it comes to Idea Forge and India? Is that a big dependence? We did recently saw China halting some of its exports when it comes to components for UAVs. Does that impact anyone? I think again, let's go look at the history of how Idea Forge has evolved and you know, our significant contribution in developing this, having the maximum hold on the technology itself kind of uh, saves us from any vagaries of supply chain, so to say. Even in the most peakest of electronic supply chain issue, we could deliver 100% and full of all our largest supply chain that, I mean, supply orders that we got as the company. And today when China is looking at limiting is also looking at limiting on the what is the, so to say, an active component supply chain, which anyways today is not a dependency of Idea Forge on that supply force. Yes, uh, from an import perspective, from a revenue uh, percentage, if I can give you about 15, 20% is still an import component of Idea Forge. And slowly, because in the last few years, after the PLI schemes came in, uh, after the initiative of the government of localization, et cetera, there's been enough support now and the size of the market itself changing. Uh, we are seeing that the localization of components are happening uh, from motor components to propellers to you know, carbon fiber rods. All of this now getting built in India, which wasn't the case earlier because I think the size and the market itself or the opportunity for the local manufacturer wasn't enough to be encouraged to support in this supply chain wherein we are also looking at alternatives of what we can and how support the overall ecosystem because the growth of Idea Forge is not just Idea Forge growth, but also our overall ecosystem that we have built in the last 16 years has seen that growth with us. Uh, they have also transformed their overall uh, you know, capacity as well, uh, you know, and their capabilities as well with us. And uh, some of them are also PLI beneficials like us uh, as well. So across the industry, we are seeing that change. In that case, once you do get an order, say from government, from a local police uh, force, how much time does it take to execute that order? And is it the reason why you see some lumpiness in quarterly revenues? Yeah. So overall, you know, if you see that it's a tender business, right? So from a tendered opportunity in a you know emergency procurement case is about six months is itself, from an RFP stage to the trial and then conclusion or uh, awarding of the contract. Since then, in an emergency contract, you get about 12 months period to execute the contract. And in that 12 months, you also have a broken down supply chain, which basically is a lots that you get delivered. So when the lots is getting manufactured, obviously in that particular quarter, you would see that the activity is purely based on that you were focusing on building the product. And then in the subsequent quarter, you will revenue it. So as soon as you build it, the revenue gets recognized and then the numbers for that quarter will change. And this is typically even for a revenue case as well, where uh, you know, if you're looking at three to four months of overall RFP to trial base, 
and then supply will also take you about three to four months. So this is how typically the cycles in the capital procurement, the overall RFP stage to trials is a little longer, can be about a couple of years, but you also get a supply period which is also a couple of years. And everything is broken down into lots and hence with the time period of within which the uh, you know, quarter will end and your supply is due will always vary uh, from different quarter to quarter. You know it's important because if an investor looks at your PNL on a quarterly basis, it makes sense and makes them understand how these uh, revenues are accounted for as well. Um, you know, I wanted to understand your export opportunity. You mentioned it as well, how you are adding more products and something that will make you give some exposure to export markets as well. Uh, recently added three resellers in North America. What is reselling exactly here? Does export market, would export market come at higher margins for you? Would it involve more investments because you know you'll have to market it in global markets? What will your plan be here? Now in the international market, uh, uh, US particularly is a focus for us because we also see US as one of the largest markets globally for uh, high technology products. And I think uh, uh, our success here gives us the confidence that uh, some of the products that we have made will have good value proposition in the US market. The whole approach of uh, uh, appointing three resellers and Whipple will uh, elaborate more on the nature of the reseller partner but the intent of going through resellers is really work with local partners who have a good understanding and grip of that uh, geography and that market rather than trying to uh, learn it from scratch uh, by doing it directly. Uh, and, and, and through that hopefully accelerate the uh, phase of adoption in that particular market. So uh, reseller partners for us also is like a value-add resellers. People who would be helping us, one, identify the local needs, the customers, uh, who would help in the training programs for the local customers, as well as give us help and support in the servicing of these uh, drones that we supply in that market. So these people who are already uh, well versed with the market, they know the drone market itself because they have been historically also selling drones for different manufacturers in especially the US territory. Okay. So what is exports right now, say two to three years down the line, since you're talking about this diversification, what would export be as a target in terms of revenues? So absolute numbers, I know still uh, something that uh, we will eventually disclose and declare. But if you see at our strategy right now, uh, we have focused right now our, on the North American market. We would be uh, focusing on penetrating that market through reseller partners as well as whatever presence that we have. We have our own subsidiary in the US market as of now. Uh, although it's a single digit number at the moment, uh, but s subsequently we are participating in different opportunities. We right now, the strategy is to go to different events, showcase our capabilities, do enough demonstrations uh, in the hands of the user and show them the, what exactly is the product that they can do, deliver, and how, what exactly autonomy means is today not known in the North American market and that exactly was what we are taking and promoting in that market. Before I get to the next question, I want to understand, can I, can I operate this one? Is it easy to operate as you were saying earlier? <laughs> it is, it is, it is very easy to operate. Uh, you just need some familiarization with it. Okay, that's interesting. But you know, while we're talking about so much demand coming up as well, do you have enough capacity for that? What's the current capacity utilization? And with the growing market, will you add more capacity, do some capex in this regard? So, uh, in the immediate short term, we do not have any capex uh, investment plan. Uh, if you look at current capacity as well, we can do about five, hour, five of our quadcopter drones and four of our switch drones in this facility in a single shift. And right now, we are only operating in a single shift. Uh, if we have to expand, we will utilize this space itself for a multiple shift and that should be good enough to cater to the at least immediate demands that we uh, see in the future as well. Okay, so you are planning to add more shifts here in the near future, something that will add to production and ultimately... It will all depend on how the production pressures or the demands of quick supply will happen, right? I mean, ultimately, otherwise, for about, and as I said, I mean, four or five thousand drones is not a challenge, even with the current supply. But if in case the ask for a faster delivery to the customer happens, then maybe there could be a possibility to relook at the overall capacity. Okay. So, you know, you spoke about the segments of the products that you're entering into. What is something that you would not like to touch? Something that you don't think you will, it'll be a value proposition for you, but yeah, drones will be used there. 
So broadly, I think we have a thumb rule of uh, doing things where we do end up adding net new value into it. Uh, just uh, doing the same replica of what's happening in the industry, I, I think both as a business philosophy and as a technology motivation doesn't fit very well with uh, uh, how we do things. So the market segments where the room for innovation or the demand for differentiated performance, reliability, autonomy is uh, stagnant are areas where probably we will not go in. So for example, uh, the uh, consumer photography drones saw uh, early growth phase internationally and have in our outlook sort of saturated globally in terms of uh, what they could deliver and how many customers could uh, sort of exploit them. So we don't see adding too much value in the consumer photography drones today and hence that's something which is an easy decision for us to not invest behind. So similarly any other example where we don't see any product differentiation coming in, we don't see any value addition coming in. Uh, we will probably stay out of them. In terms of the balance sheet, working capital, you've reduced your inventory day substantially. Working capital days are around 200. Is this the norm for the industry generally? And what is your outlook here? Will you be looking at reducing it or you're comfortable at these levels? So right now our projection would stay around 200 days. Uh, there are multiple factors around how we were looking at maintaining these numbers. Uh, one, obviously, because in, in the market as well, we have now from the last almost three years, have a reseller partner network. So Idea Forge now kind of goes through the opportunities with these reseller partners. Otherwise, you know, we would have had to have our own workforce on the field to capture the Indian market itself. So these are all our, again, our value add reseller partners who helps us uh, in whether it is your induction of the products, uh, training or support wherever required. I have to ask you this uh, because the investors who are watching or invested in Idea Forge would want to know not a near-term guidance, but you do have some plans in place, right? You've grown substantially, around 200 crores of revenues now in FY23. What's the glide path, say, next three to four years down the line? What's the CAGR in terms of revenue growth and margins that you're looking at? See, we're, uh, again, saying anything on the numbers side would say uh, disclosing something which is not out there. So I would say that our intent is to strongly uh, invest behind technology so that we can create the differentiator that is there in the market and continue to have a healthy margin growth as well with the current portfolio as well as the uh, product line that we have in Visage today, uh, including for our subsystems or the quadcopters that we have, as well as the new product line that Rahul also quoted. So what you had done earlier, will you be able to continue that? That is where our focus is at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I tried hard, but okay. <laughs> Gentlemen, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us today on Inside Out and explaining everything about Idea Forge. And uh, speak to you very soon then. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Okay, all right. With that, it's a wrap. And it's back to you in the studios. All right, that was a very special deep dive into Idea Forge Technologies. But we slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll come back with another interesting stock. Kesaram Industries is the stock in our Swatlight segment. Welcome back to Inside Out. Well, Kesaram Industries is a cement company on our radar. To run you through a few basic details first, it's part of the BK Bidla Group and it has a cement capacity of around 10.75 million tons. They also have their plants in Karnataka as well as in Telangana. Well, their units are vertically integrated. That is, it's backed by Klinker. They have captive limestone mines and also captive thermal power as well. The mainstay of their business is cement, though they also have a rayon and chemicals unit, which is currently loss making. But the management has been guiding for some value unlocking by a demerger and possibly turning around it operationally. So let's focus on the core business. That's the cement business. They sell most of the cement that they produce in West, South and other parts of India. And over the past few years, the capacity utilization levels have been hovering around that 55 to around 70% odd. What supports them is valuations. On an EV per ton basis, they trade at nearly half the cost to set up a new cement plant. Well, investors have been hoping the company moves from survival to revival phase and ultimately thriving at least at some point of time. But where's the problem then? Well, the company is sitting on a debt of close to around 1,800 crore rupees, bulk of which consists of NCDs from a Goldman Sachs consortium with a borrowing cost hovering around 19%. But 
Well, the management has been indicating all options are on the table, from refinancing at a lower cost and also talking about raising equity that could give in lenders some kind of confidence. Well, talking about in equity though, let's run you through the shareholding pattern. The promoter entity holds close to around 43% stake, but what stands out is Mr. Kumar Mangalam Birla has a large part of this promoter holding. So in case there is some kind of equity funding, well, then the street will be wondering whether or not he goes ahead and takes a larger stake in the company. Well, there is also some FII participation and the DIs basically it's just banking names in there. But let's wind this down with the three big triggers that you should be tracking from here on. First up, will the asset be folded into Ultratech Cement at a later date as consolidation in the sector broadly picks up? Next up, the management has been guiding for double digit volume growth with a bit up a ton of around 650 rupees per ton. Now achieving this is going to be key. And in the near term, all eyes will be on the refinancing of their existing debt to low teens in comparison to the high teens that they're currently borrowing at. Well, we've run out of time on this edition of Inside Out. It's goodbye from Sonal and myself. But do write to us and tell us about companies you want us to discuss and you want to hear about as well. We'll try to feature some of them on our show. Thanks so much for watching.